jam and honey. It is day four. Day four of Dear Harold. And wowzers, am I tired. <laughs> I stayed up way too late last night watching Baby Daddy. But I love it. It is has a perfect humor. Totally reminds me of you, honey. The baby has had diaper, had, 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 what the, has had duct tape wrapped around its diaper, has had an ace bandaged, bandaged as the diaper. Every time I just think it's hysterical. Anyways, I'm gonna start my morning by editing yesterday's vlog. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand. To the fire, but it's no use because you can't stop it from shining Honey. through. You didn't figure out the banking situation. I got a nice little call yesterday from one of our like editors that we work with for the book saying the wire transfer that you did didn't go through, which means that now I have to handle it. So I've been talking to our bank trying to figure that out. Basically, you just filled out the form wrong, didn't put the right information. So I'm trying to figure out that stuff. Finally finished my vlog editing it today. I filmed a lot yesterday. And it is 1.30 and I'm so tired. All I wanna do is go back to sleep because I feel like I hardly slept last night. <sighs> but I still gotta figure out this banking thing so we can get the money over for the book. That's just life, I guess, without you. Okay, I'm having a hard moment. I'm trying not to cry, but more pictures were posted today from um, the obstacle course and I couldn't find a single picture of Harold uh, and that just sucks like really bad but anyways um, the ruck is supposed to start at like 4 a.m. tonight and last around three hours so I'm pretty much going I'm gonna try to do two things I'm gonna be awake and I'm gonna be praying throughout the whole thing but I'm also gonna try to like ride my bike or like work out or like just like go really hard for this three hours so i don't know i just feel like i'm doing something too to like be close to him in some way like i don't know if that sounds weird but yep i feel a little bit emotional right now so i think i'm gonna go watch the bachelor the men tell all and get my mind off of it <laughs> honey we literally have the greatest neighbors ever and i just feel like with everything going on like God is just using them as a reminder of like, he's taking care of me and he's taking care of you. And I know you guys I haven't even told you what's been going on, but I'll tell you that in a little bit. But anyways, um, our neighbors just brought me over some food to make sure that I was eating and I had dinner. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go eat it and I'm gonna just chill out and then eventually I'll kind of tell you guys kind of what's been going on and everything. Ranger, you were not supposed to be eating that. How did you even open that? How did you open that? Get your head out of there. No. Okay, Earl's fam, we have some catching up to do. <sighs> okay. So, everything that you just watched happened on Wednesday. It is now Friday morning. Um, the same day that I'm posting this. I didn't vlog anything um, yesterday and I didn't finish vlogging on Wednesday because um, a lot of stuff has happened and just like emotionally I've been dealing with everything. <sighs> but I wanted to fill you guys in and I really just wanted to be honest. Like I really wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know if I want to share any of this stuff, but you know, the point of this vlog channel is to share everything the hard times um you know the good times but i just feel like if i were to leave this out then that wouldn't be painting the real picture of some of the struggles that we go through um and that's the point because i know that a ton of other women who are in my same situation watch this or are gonna be in the same situation uh so i just want to be as real as possible now on wednesday <laughs> I got a message uh, from a friend telling me um, some very tragic news that somebody at Ranger School with Harold had passed away. <sighs> Reading that was so hard and 
one of those things where you know you could be in such a good mood and as soon as you see something or hear something or read something it's like you feel every single emotion um and that is like what i felt in that moment <sighs> oh it was so it is so heartbreaking um so the soldier his name was mike paros and he went to west point with harold as well and he just graduated he was only 21 years old and um he passed away at ranger school with harold and so obviously i was completely heartbroken for his family and his loved ones um but it also brought that like realization again obviously of just like how dangerous this lifestyle is um and it made me you know sad for all the other rangers who are there dealing with it um uh, and i wasn't even sure harold's relationship to him i didn't know if harold knew him i didn't know if harold like saw it happen like i just didn't know any of this stuff at the time when i found out it wasn't even public knowledge um so i knew very little information and also obviously coming off of if you're new here um harold just recently climbed mount everest so we were apart for two months and obviously everest is life or death um situation so i was prepared for that for everest but going into ranger school it was supposed to be like a sense of relief like i wasn't having to worry about those type of things like he was supposed to be safe and so hearing this tragic news was just like really really hard because emotionally like i just i didn't want to be having to think about that or like the like dangers <sighs> and you know that that's not common in the first place um but that is that is what happens when he lost their life uh, so needless to say it was an extremely hard day and all i wanted to do was talk to harold so um i ended up taking the dogs for a walk and i just had to get out of the house a couple of things happened when we were walking you know the puppies obviously were tired and stuff and tracker just kind of like laid down at one point it was just kind of her being like oh i'm tired like i just need to rest and i just so felt like that like all of this was just like so much and i just needed to rest and um like i like looked at the sky and everything and i saw this like gray cloud um but you could see the sun like shining through it um and like the rays coming out and it was obviously like this beautiful sight of god it just in that moment it was like okay like this is obviously extremely hard in a horrible situation but i have to remember like god is in control and god has a plan and i just have to rest in him like in order for me to have any sort of rest any sort of peace i have to get that from god <sighs> so anyways the rest of the day was still really really hard i hadn't heard anything from harold and the ruck was happening and if you guys knew like that was the thing that harold was most nervous about was the ruck because you know he really didn't have time to recover after um climbing mount everest before going to ranger school but this is the only time he could go because technically he's a cold weather injury and the following time would be considered like a winter one so he wouldn't be able to go to that so he was basically forced into going to this ranger class even though he wasn't physically in the best shape um because obviously he had frostbite and like couldn't be working out so anyways normally harold is extremely confident um in all things you know army related and he's so good at all of them but we're all a little bit uneasy about this had a rough night whatever just thinking and praying about him and and thursday morning uh, i think it was around like 10 o'clock i got a call from harold uh which obviously meant um because you're not supposed to 
I'm not supposed to hear from him, um, but I got a call from Harold, which meant that, you know, something happened, he didn't pass, um, and it was not a good connection in the first place, and I knew that he was, you know, obviously devastated, and so that's just really hard, like, as a wife of, like, knowing, like, how to comfort them, um, and stuff, and I knew he had limited time and stuff, so basically, you know, he didn't pass it, uh, but because of the death, there was an investigation going on, and so it meant, normally they would come home right away, but it meant that they were holding them, and so I was just supposed to wait until I got another call, and he said he didn't know if it was going to be later that day, or if it was going to be the next day, or when that was going to be, so again, I was just like heartbroken. I feel like I've dealt through this, but now I'm talking about it again. This is so hard. I'm sorry. Whew. Because obviously I'm hurting for my husband because I know it's hard on him. And I know that he's kind of like beating himself up a, a bit. But I also know, like, I know that he gave it his all and that honestly he just wasn't ready. You know, it, it was like the quickest turnaround. And so I just, I knew that. Um... But I just wanted to be able to cover him and he like wasn't coming home like he should be. So I waited and I waited and I spent the whole day just waiting. And um, I never got a call again. <sighs> so eventually I went to sleep probably around like 4 a.m. or something. I don't know. Uh, but I was starting to get back in like a better place. You know, I was like really realizing like it's okay. Like obviously you know there's something so much bigger here when like even though I don't know that God was probably protecting Harold you know like just keeping him safe if it, his body really wasn't ready then like you know bringing him home from that or there's something else I don't know but obviously God knows um and so I was getting in a better mindset but obviously it's been like just playing tricks on me of like Harold's not home and I'm just like waiting for a phone call. And so luckily I just recently got a phone call I, again this morning around 10 a.m. Um, and he sounds so much better. It was like he had like life back in his voice again which was so good. Um, and we got to chat for a little bit. It was a, a longer than our first phone call. Whew. But he also said that they're still holding them um, and he he's not sure still like if he said it's about a 50% chance that they'll release him today or they'll hold him all the way until Monday. <sighs> and you guys know my friend was supposed to come over this weekend but when I got the call from Harold I told her not to come because obviously he would be coming home. And now if he's not coming home now I'm going through this all alone like oh. It's really, really frustrating. <sighs> but he sounded, like I said, he sounded a lot better. But at the same time, you know, I think it's even harder on him because it's like, obviously he's upset and he's not able to just come home and deal with it. Like with the comfort of his home and his wife and stuff. He's just stuck there still like being surrounded by it, um, which is can be depressing and stuff. So that I know that's difficult but like I'm crossing my fingers that I get to go pick him up today but I'm just not really sure I kind of wanted to wait to I was hoping you know that he would come home and we could talk about it before I said anything to you guys um but I don't know just the more I thought about it I was like you know this is a situation and this is what it is and we have to work through it um and like I said, I just know, like, God is in control, and, like, it's gonna be okay, whatever the next step is, whatever, you know, that means. If that means that we're moving right away, I'm not sure. I'm trying not to jump to any conclusions. We'll figure that out once Harold is home, but, like, I'm just really glad that, you know, hopefully I'll see him very soon. <laughs> I'm just excited to hug him again. I just feel like I've been going through so much recently. <sighs> And it's been a lot um, to just like take in. And I think like the stress has definitely been getting to me. And I'm also the type of person like when I'm upset, I 
like to handle things like by myself like mostly by myself like like Harold is the one person that I would like feel comfortable and like just like be okay with like I just would not end up me when I'm upset and stuff like that but other than him it's like if he can't be there for me then I pretty much just want to handle it on my own <sighs> so I'm just ready for us to kind of like finally have each other to like go through this stuff <sighs> through but I just wanted to tell you guys that because that's real and that's the situation that happened um and <sighs> whew, we still obviously need to work through it but um the overall thing <laughs> even though I'm crying and even though like I'm so upset about the situation is you know please a be praying for us that Slender's family um, and for his loved ones, I, you know, the only thing that I can, you know, really pray for is a peace that surpasses all understanding because, I mean, how can you even understand that? How can you understand, like, your son or your loved one, you know, going away to something that you thought was safe um, and that happening and, whoo. I, you just can't like I don't think that's something you can really like come to terms with so I just ask that you join me in prayer for that family who and um, you know at the same time just you know pray for Harold and I and just kind of like what this means for us but like also you know making it even more like evident like God has totally got this I know also that like we can learn so much from this situation so of course I'm trying to see the positives out of it and you know failure is inevitable you know through life we're gonna have so many different failures um, and so I know that this is just like the smallest little bump in the road and something that we're gonna be able to work through together and you know it's gonna lead us somewhere else um, but to be able to persevere and you know to grow stronger together through this and I know we're just gonna come out like even tougher um, and I think too we'll just like learn a lot out of it so failure is not a bad thing um, you know it's a lesson to be learned to be gained anybody who is successful has gone through countless failures and the only way that you become successful is to continue to overcome them so um, Honey, we're totally going to get through this together, obviously with God, um, and I just love you so much, <sighs> and there's nobody I would rather do life with than you, <sighs> and I'm just really excited to see you and to hug you, <sighs> and to continue our life, whatever that is, and whatever this next chapter holds, <sighs> so what else, Jim, thank you for listening to me, <sighs> and my emotions. Um, and thank you for being our support system. Uh, we love you so much. I'm not really sure uh, what these next days will hold. Um, if I'm gonna kind of hold off on vlogging or whatnot. Obviously, whenever the time comes, I'll catch you guys up to speed with everything and how we're dealing with stuff. But I'm just gonna play it by ear and obviously wait until Harold's like ready to talk about things. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that. So if you guys are going through anything in life, um, if you you know have failed at something, uh, don't give up. Um, don't beat yourself down about it. <laughs> You'll get through it. You know, in college, this is something I never talk about it because failure is really, really hard. You know, and I think sometimes failure can be harder on those that don't fail a lot. And I think that's why this hits really, really hard is because Harold's the type of person where it's like, man, he's such a go-getter and he's so good at everything that he does that, like, he just makes things happen, you know? Like Everest or, you know, like creating USX or in, like baseball, like all these things. He just is good at it and he's used to kind of being successful. So when you finally, like, something doesn't go completely your way it almost just like completely defeats you because you're not used to that well i had a similar situation i didn't expect to talk about this at all but might as well so i had a similar situation my whole life going through school i've been like top of my class like 
very smart, very driven, just always really, really good at school. And um, in my sophomore year of college, I was taking a class and basically I failed it, um, which has never ever happened in my entire life. I literally was a straight A student and I was so incredibly defeated after that it crushed me like to no end i really really struggled and i'll probably talk about that more since i brought it up now like it's something that i never talk about because i'm almost like ashamed of it which i shouldn't be ashamed of um because obviously my point being is that that was something that happened years ago now but that was such a bump in the road and that led to so many other things. I ended up changing my major. I ended up graduating on time. I still, you know, went on to do all these great things and to have this life that I have now and to have the love of my life. And so as much as in that moment, I was so, you know, hurt and defeated and just like at the lowest point in my life, it was just something small and I just had to, overcome that and you know i just want that to be a message to you guys is to don't let your failures defeat you keep pushing forward you know if if whatever that thing is and you can't necessarily overcome that try a new path you know go a different direction see what other door is open that could be just a door that's closed and god is trying to show you a different route uh so don't give up keep persevering keep working through it and just remember that God has a plan for your life that is so much better than your own. Um, and it's all going to work out okay. Anyways, I've talked for a really long time, so I'm going to end the video here. Thank you again for listening um, to my very emotional <laughs> words. Um, and just thank you for your prayers. And we love you. And I will see you guys soon. So love God, love people, make a difference, and be thankful. Love you guys. I think I could actually cry right now. I just went to go look for the butter, so excited, empty. What? The boy literally had butter.